Well, the first thing that a person should ask is why is it lagging? Right. If it's lagging, it isn't. And if you've been working everything evenly, it's not because because you've been neglecting it. Right. It's lacking for a genetic reason. Right. So that's not going to go away. You know, that's there. So the question is, can I overcome that genetic tendency? Hello and welcome. I am Coach Castle, a certified biomechanics expert, nutritionist and efficiency coach. Subscribe to this channel to learn the most efficient ways to maximize your muscle growth and recovery, enhance your body, and advance your mind, all using the latest science. Welcome to Castle's Corner. Lagging muscle groups. Now, for me, I've had lagging muscle groups. We all do. But my understanding of it is if you have a lagging body part, you just have to train it to the best of your abilities at the same time as the other ones. And that's what I tell my clients. Now, there's strategies I've heard such as... Um, if you have weak biceps, for example, eat more food the day that you train biceps. I mean, that it seems not, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's just those kind of things, they seem nonsensical. They say train biceps more frequently. There does seem to be a little bit of evidence for that, but it does also seem to be uh, for like a set period of time, like not for too long. And then in the, the gains will kind of plateau again, if you right. will. So uh, right. what, are you, what are your thoughts on lagging body parts? Well, the first thing that a person should ask is why is it lagging? Right. If it's lagging, it isn't. And if you've been working everything evenly, it's not because because you've been neglecting it. Right. It's lacking for a genetic reason. Right. So that's not going to go away. You know, that's there. So the question is, can I overcome that genetic tendency to have that body part lag? Right. So so then they say, well, uh, should I train that muscle harder? And I would say harder than what? And they say harder than the other muscles. And I go, so you're not training the other muscles as hard as you can. It should be maximum shouldn't, up and across the board. Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't you be training everything as hard as you can? Right. So, and, and is there such a thing as working it harder than as hard as you can? Right. No. I mean, as hard as you can is as hard as you can. Right. So now, <coughs> um, yeah, thank you. There is a thing that's fascinating. Getting back to this thing we were talking about before about how many sets and how many reps. There is some research now that suggests that people get more growth when they do more frequency with less volume. Mm -hmm. So let's just say instead of doing, you know, 10 sets for a body part once a week, you do five sets for that body part twice a week. Now, the first thing that I will say is that if you were to switch from this to that, you might get some growth just because it's new. Right. And so the question is, will it continue? And well, will, it, will it will it eventually end up the same way the other one ended up? Real fast, I just want to clarify because I think I know what you mean, but I also want to be clear because you're not talking about muscle confusion. That's not real. You're just speaking about the fact that you changed your volume in your rep scheme. Right. I, I right. just want to so, be clear about that. Right. So let's just say that I do my biceps once a week or once every five days, and I do 10 sets. Um. And so this person, let's say this person who's, who claims to be an expert on bringing up lagging body parts, says to me, okay, well, keep doing that for all your other body parts, but for your bicep, either work it with 10 sets twice a week or split it between five sets and five sets. Mm. In other words, get an extra bicep workout in there during the week, right? One of the first thing I would say is if that works for the, for the biceps, then it would work for everything else. Yeah. And wouldn't you do everything else that way too then? Because you want everything to get better, right? Yeah. So unless you say, well, no, I'd rather that my biceps catch up if that's possible. Well, I would certainly, I would say it's worth the experiment. That's what I would say. But you said something earlier, which is true, which is they have done studies where they said, if you work a body part every day or every other day, it does respond, but then it, it, then it plateaus off again. Like within two weeks, it crosses into overtraining. Yep. It's too often. So it'll, in the beginning, it doesn't, it doesn't get to that point. But after, you know, 10, 12, 13 workouts like that, you know, it, it, it says, okay, I'm going the other way now. It's, it's just too much. I don't know if you want to comment on this, but it just brings up a question to mind is um, like Andrew, like site enhancement. So for example, we're talking about taking steroids now. So uh -huh. obviously all the sites you can take them, but for example, if, well, I don't want to confuse this with inflammation, but if you are, injecting a small amount in the particular muscles you're trying to grow would there be a site enhancement effect there you know i don't know i i've never tried that uh I, i've heard that the reason why bodybuilders today's their deltoids are bigger than they were 
you know, in the 80s and 90s is because they're injecting it into the deltoid now instead of into the gluteus. I don't know. I don't know that firsthand. I've never seen it. I've ne I mean, I, it, you know, I, I, there might be an inflammation effect. I, I don't think... I don't think that the steroid works better where it's injected. If that were true, everybody would have huge glutes. <laughs> I, yeah, I would see. Now, I would agree with that because that that was always my argument: is most guys inject in their their quads and their glutes. And I mean, I I do know some who will inject in their chest and even their biceps and calves. Yeah. But I I would always kind of said that that was more of an inflammation effect from having the oil under your skin than any. I, I and by the way, you you can sort of see sometimes that it's not even. <laughs> There's like a little bump there. <laughs> yeah, like a bump. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely think that that's, you know, look, if we when we look at the physiques from the '80s and '90s, when you look at the Samir Banuts, you know, and you look at the, uh, you know, Francis Benfato and Bob Paris, and you know, these guys had beautiful physiques. You know, when we see a guy today with like enormous deltoids. At first glance, it's impressive, but it's not really normal. It's not really symmetrical. It's not really, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't quite look like the statue of David or the Farnese Hercules, right? So there's something odd about that look.